I'm going to set up a scheduled backup. A scheduled backup is different than a one-time backup because I can schedule it to happen automatically at a designated time every day or week or month, whatever it is I decide to do. I can also set up, besides a full backup, I can set up incremental and differential backups. So if I hit the drop down and I choose backup to disk, because right now that's all I have is the local disk to backup to, then I'll get a wizard that'll pop up and it'll allow me to choose how I want to set up this scheduled backup. On the left-hand side, I'll choose Edit. And I'm going to uncheck my E drive because my E drive is my backup drive. So there's no reason to backup the backup drive. I'll leave everything else checked so that way I get a full backup where I can do what's called a bare metal restoration, where I can restore the data to another piece of hardware if I need to. If I need to deselect any other folders, I can expand whatever drive I'd like to do and uncheck any particular folders that I don't want to back up. Otherwise, I will just back them all up. Now, one of the problems with deselecting folders is that you'd end up not backing up the entire drive. So if I add any files or folders to program files, for instance, and I uncheck it, then those are never going to get backed up unless I go in and I alter this backup to include those folders as well. Once I have the selections the way I want, I'll click OK. And I can also click on Test Edit Credentials. So this tells me whether or not I've got the right username and password that I can use to back up the selections. And these all look good. Under Microsoft SQL, it says it's not tested, but the database underneath it does say success. So I know that we're fine. Now I can go on the right-hand side for the different types of backups. So I see that I've got a full backup as well as an incremental backup. So a full backup obviously is going to back up less often, and it's going to get everything on, and it's going to back up everything on my computer. Now the incremental backup is going to be a little different. It's just going to back up anything that's changed since the day before all the way back to the full backup job. So if I click on Edit... And we have lots of different options here. Now, if you're confused about the difference between incremental and differential, there is another video in the playlist where I go into detail the differences between the two. So I can choose when my full backup is going to happen. Right now, it's every one week on Friday at 11 o'clock. I can change that to every two weeks, three weeks, or whatever it is I want. I could change days, hours, months, or years. So I'm going to say every two weeks on a Friday is good at 11 o'clock, and I can choose my starting backup date and click OK. Now, if I also wanted to make changes to the incremental, I just click Edit again, go back in, and I would choose the schedule and choose how often I wanted to run that incremental backup. Now take a look, it'll say every day. So that means it's going to do on weekends as well. So if you don't want to do Saturdays and Sundays, then you can just choose every weekday. Now it's going to ignore the Friday ones because it knows it's doing that full backup. So I'm going to say the first incremental backup is going to happen after the first full backup. And then it's going to happen every night. Now under storage on the left-hand side, can see how long it's going to keep the backup job. So by default, we see two weeks for the full and one week for the incrementals before it overwrites and starts over again. That seems a little bit light for me, so I'm going to change that to every six weeks. And we're going to keep the full backups for 10 weeks. And it really depends on how much storage you have and what your requirements are for keeping backups. Also, we can choose the backup disk. Now, I only have the one, so we're only going to have the one option. But if you leave it set to any, then if I add an additional drive, it will automatically pick up that drive once my first drive gets full or gets removed. So having the any one seems to work pretty well in most cases. Under network, I can choose to use any a network interface if I have multiple interfaces. In this case, I only have one, so it doesn't really matter. And also, I can choose IPv4 or IPv6. Under notification, here's where we add our recipients. Now, in a different video, I'm going to show you how to set up those recipients, but this is where you would add that. So that way, they get an email saying that the backup job has run or has failed for whatever reasons. If you want to do a test run before the backup runs, you could click that box, and it'll just go ahead and 
check to make sure that everything is going to run properly before the actual job runs. And if it doesn't, it'll notify you. And the verification basically goes in and goes and checks that all the data is actually there. And by default, it's going to be there. But keep in mind that it takes twice as long to run with verification on than if it does with verification off. So for instance, if you run a backup job and this verification is making the first backup job run into the second backup job because it's taking so long, then you're going to want to turn that off. Advanced open file is on by default, and that basically means it allows you to back up files that are open, so that way those don't get skipped. And we have advanced disk-based backup if you chose to install that feature. So if I do check that box, then what it's going to do is if it's trying to back up a server that's underpowered, it will use the power of this server in order to make up the difference. If you want to use any pre or post commands, you can do those. I rarely find anyone who does this, but you can certainly run commands before or after the backup job if you'd like. Under file and folder options, we have lots of options. And by default, the ones that are on here uh, usually do a pretty good job. So we see for full and incremental, we can do delete selected files and folders after the successful backup. That one's pretty dangerous to do. And then incremental, the backup method says that it's backing up changed files since the last full or incremental backup. But under file and folder options, the enable single instance backup of NTFS volumes is checked and is necessary. The rest of these are all optionals. And backup open files with a lock, basically what that does is it will back up a copy of a file that is open and it'll lock that file so it cannot be changed during the backup. So that way it keeps corruption from happening on the file that's live. For Microsoft SQL, if you're running SQL, you'll see this option. In my case, we are because Backup Exec does use a version of SQL. Then you can choose how you want that done for both full and incrementals. Now, I find in general that the incremental SQL Server backups don't always work. So I tend to just do full backups of my SQL Server. But you can try it. And if it does work, you can leave the incremental changes there. But if not, you can just switch to full uh, Microsoft SQL backups only. If you decide you would like to exclude anything, you can certainly do that here. And if I click insert, you'll need to know the path to that particular location. So in this case, I'm not going to exclude anything, but you certainly can. You would need to know the path that you see here under resource name and path, as well as the name itself. So this isn't used all that often. It's easier just to uncheck the files or folders in the GUI that I was showing earlier than it is to do it here. But it does give you a little bit more granular control because, for instance, you could say any files that were dated a certain date and time, you could exclude those more easily than by doing it the other way. And when everything is set the way you want it, you can click OK. OK again. And now we're going to have a scheduled backup. Now, it's not going to run now. It's going to wait to run for a few days after now. But we can take a look at it in our job monitor. So there's the full backup and the date it's going to run, what the schedule is for it, as well as the incremental backup. So that's how you set up scheduled backups in Backup Exec 21.